Hello, and welcome to this edition of Synth Sound Design Masterclass with Computer Music. In this first edition of a new series of tutorials, we're going to be concentrating exclusively on GeForce Software's amazing Access Synthesizer. The Access Software Synthesizer is predominantly based on the original ARP Axe Synthesizer, which was the little brother to the ARP Odyssey Synthesizer. While both of these machines adopt a legendary status in their own rights, there are certain similarities between them. Hence, we're drawing inspiration for today's tutorial from a leading light in the electronic music world who also happened to be a pretty heavy ARP user. Billy Curry was a member of the band Ultravox and was a particular fan of the ARP Odyssey, which to use on numerous occasions in a lead line role. His highly identifiable playing was not only engineered by his own musical training, but also in part down to the makeup of the ARP synthesizer itself. While he was predominantly an Odyssey user, we're going to adapt that ethos and place it within the Axis infrastructure. So grab a copy of the Axis synthesizer, load it into your door, and let's get stuck in. It's going to be very helpful if we start from a default setting, so we're going to perform an initialize. We do this by going to the top of the plugin window, where you'll see that there is a browser bar. You can also click on the icon to the left of it as well if you prefer. Once you click in this area, you will see that it opens up the library of presets. Down on the far left hand side, you'll also see init patch. If you click that, it will initialize the patch and you should hear a sawtooth with a wide open filter. As with all manufacturers of synthesizers, ARP had their own take on the terminology that they would use on the front panel. Sometimes this could lead to confusion and there have been stories of some users staring at the front panel of ARP synthesizers not being able to get a sound out of it. Thankfully, we have sound already, but we are going to adapt what we're hearing. Head to the audio mixer section, which you'll find located right in the center. Like some other hardware synthesizers, particularly synths like the SH-101, you can see that there are faders which are attributed to different waveforms. We are currently hearing the sawtooth, hence the sawtooth fader, is turned up. We're going to leave this fader where it is, but we're also going to move to the sub-oscillator fader, click and hold on it, and drag it up. And we're going to set this to a value of minus 28 decibels, or thereabouts. When you click and drag a fader, you will see that there is a numeric attached to this, and this will serve a helpful purpose of telling you where to steer your fader. You'll also notice as you drag these faders around that it could be quite difficult to get the exact number we describe, but don't worry about that, as long as you're in the right sort of ballpark, you should be fine. Having applied the square wave sub oscillator, which is one octave below our sawtooth, you should now hear a sound like this. There's a slight hint of sub oscillator in there. Next we move to the right to the filter section. You can see it's described as voltage control filter and you can see the legend VCF frequency which is our cutoff fader. Click and hold on this fader and drag it to a value of 1500 Hz. Once again you might find it a little bit tricky to get the exact value but as long as you're in the right sort of ballpark you mustn't worry. Then we're going to adjust the resonance fader to a value of 45%. This should take some of the brightness out of the sound as well as introducing a small degree of resonance. Next we're going to apply a small amount of key follow. What this will do is as we play lines on the keyboard it means that the cutoff frequency element will track what we play on the keyboard. This can sometimes be useful if you want to actually use the filter in the same way that you might use an oscillator. However we don't want to go quite that far, we just want to introduce a small degree of tracking. So grab the keyboard fader which is in the VCF section and drag this to a value of around about 55%. We should now hear a sound like this. You'll notice that on the far right hand side of the panel of the axis there is an ADSR envelope generator. This envelope is assignable but it is predominantly being used for controlling amplitude or the amplification side of our sound. We're going to leave that very much as it is, but we're also going to use a secondary envelope which is located at the top of the plug-in window. This envelope is quite a lot more versatile and it can be routed to just about anything on the synthesizer panel. In order to create a routing, you need to specify where you would like the XADSR to go. This is as simple as clicking on the fader you want to send it to. So we're going to send this in the direction of the VCF cutoff frequency. So moving back to the VCF section, Click on the fader and you'll see that some blue brackets appear around the outside of the fader. You will also notice that in the XADSR section it says VCF cutoff. This confirms the routing. 
we just need to make two subtle alterations to the XADSR envelope, the first of which is changing the decay fader. Click and hold on this and drag it to a value of 0.032 seconds. You'll notice that there are a lot of digits after the decimal point on this particular setting, and that's because it's a very snappy envelope. So aim for roughly 0.032 and you'll be in the right ballpark. Next, we need to influence the amount of X ADSR envelope which is being sent to the cutoff control. We do this by changing the amplitude amount, which is controlled from this pot here. Click and hold on the pot and drag it up to a value of roughly 10%. This now means that the X ADSR envelope is creating a tiny snap in our sound, which is generated as it controls the VCF cutoff frequency. One of the most legendary aspects to Billy Curry's sound was his use of oscillator sync. Now in order to program oscillator sync, you have to have two oscillators. Unfortunately, the Access only has one oscillator, being the little brother to the Odyssey. However, this is not a problem because we can engineer something which does a pretty good facsimile. We're going to do this by moving to the bottom right hand corner of the plugin, where you can see there are a number of settings for playing polyphonically, monophonically and legato. We're going to leave the polyphony set to a value of 6, but we're going to condense those voices on top of each other using the unison control. Activate unison and then move to the detune pot which is right next door and drag this to a value of roughly 10%. This creates the classic super saw effect. You can experiment with the amount of detune, but obviously the further you take this, the more like a Eurosynth sound it will be. Another one of the fantastic strengths of the Axis plugin it's that it has a number of really good effects built right into the panel. We're going to look at using all three of them, and we start by applying some distortion. You'll see this at the top of the plugin in the centre, and we activate it by clicking on the tiny little light which glows green, just to the left of each legend. Once you've switched it on, turn the gain up to approximately 70%. This will immediately result in a grittier sound. Now you can adjust the actual brightness of the distortion to taste, but we think something quite bright is suitable here, so we're going to adjust the tone of the distortion by setting it to a value of approximately 85. Next we're going to activate the delay section. Same thing again, click on the green light so it becomes activated. Begin by changing the feedback control, which we're going to set to a value of around about 20%. The left and right controls actually relate to timing, so we're going to set the left control to a value which is 1 beats and the right control which is set to a value of 3 quarter beats. Finally, we're going to add a relatively generous reverb. As with the other effects, we're going to switch it on by clicking on the green light. We quite like preset 1, which gives us a particular colour of reverb, but we're also going to change the size of the reverb by setting this to approximately 40%. Depending on the nature of your production, you can obviously adjust this to suit. Now this actually concludes the preparation of our sound, but we do have to make a small mention of the way you might consider playing this patch. Because it's quite soloistic in nature, it stands to reason that you may well want to use your pitch and mod controls as part of your performance. One element of this became synonymous with Billy Curry's playing, and it was the way he used LFO. Now this was partly due to the performance controls on the Odyssey, which even if we were being kind, possibly left a lot to be desired. So you may want to consider when you start playing soloistic lines, adding large amounts of LFO.